Some interesting motors, Mark 1 Fiesta, uh, room Prezza. And this is a lunchtime halt, so you'll have to bear with us because I don't quite know when the cars are going to come through. We'll have a mill around the cars while we wait for some to arrive. So, classic Talbot Sunbeam. <gasps> MG a 205 GTI, probably a 19. 19, tell by the wheels. 1275, I would expect. Yeah. So the preference today was to come to this and see some rally cars or go to VW Northwest for Tatton Park. But you'll probably know that the Mercedes went pop over the weekend, so this is the better place to come to in the Civic. It needs things like a wheel bearing, maybe an exhaust. But I'm expecting some rather rare rally cars coming down that ramp. Little MG car here as well. See many of these around. Last time I saw one of these, it was in the centre of London. That doesn't even compute, does it really? Thanks for the thumbs up. Uh, you'll be on YouTube, yeah. <laughs> You're expecting about 70 cars or so, aren't you? 40. It's 40 now, is it? Said 70 on the thing. Forty-five, fifty. Right. Well, that's it. People are still trying to get uh, accustomed to it, aren't they? I'm not surprised. They're kind of in the wrong place, aren't they? Here we go. Nice Morgan there up on the main road. So in case you're wondering, this is actually where we come to the Ray car shows as well. So it's not just classic events that are on the field. You also get little race events and things like this as well. It's nice to see something local. So this is the Bridge House Tea Rooms. So when you saw me at... I think it was probably a month or so ago. I had Dorothy over there and that's the field. So that's where all the show cars appear and so on. But there's a nice river that runs down the back as well. Have a proper look around these in the meanwhile. Oh, I can hear the burble of an exhaust. Very cool. Yeah. Is it roof vent as well? Civi Oscars. I see many of those now. Oh, another. Oh, that's a proton. <laughs> Classic proton. Love it.
206. Ah, nothing like squeaky brakes. So to a six GTI 180, my word. And there's the Morgan that went past before, obviously coming to the tea rooms. Uh, they're starting to come in thick and fast now. Clear 172 by the looks of it. Those can move. Thanks for the thumbs up, by the way. Ooh, that's low. Oh, RS. Oh my word, look at the rear bumper. Okay, I think it started off life as a 172 and is who knows what now. Renault Sport, so yeah. That's the thing about these cars. What they enter is quite remarkable. Well, I can smell this petrol and racing oil. It's like being on the TT. Tad slower though. So they regularly hold events at the Bridge House Tea Rooms. Classic bike nights and classic car nights as well. And even if you don't have a classic, it's worth driving up here just to see what's about. There's also a little garden centre as well. Those things like a still bees, apple trees, hostas. And you've got the tea room that has ice creams and they also put food on as well, like burgers and things. Yeah, it is. Well, you know how much we love the Ignis this. This is an earlier one. I'm trying to think this might actually be a Mark I. Not really up on my retro Ignises. But we know that the Ignis Sports are tremendous little cars. Listen to the sound of that as well. Sun's joined us. Yay. It's a Subaru. Oh my word, look at the stiff suspension on that beast. Apologies for calling that a mini. Straight cut box by the sound of it. <sighs> Proper car. Fiat Uno. My word. It's worth coming just to see one of those. Oh, fantastic car. <gasps> Early one as well, I think. I'd say it's a Turbo IE, but who knows. 60 so yeah the bets on that being a standard 60 are going to be remote at best surprise me if it did have an ie engine in it thanks for the thumbs up a plate So we've now seen a 206, we've seen a Proton, we've seen Minis, Subarus, and now a Fiat Uno 60. Many years ago, one of my friends had a 60S, and it looks like we've got Mitsubishi Colt now. Look at the suspension on them. Reminds me of my old cars back in the day. The stiffness is ridiculous. Or is it a Proton? Can't tell. Lotus engineered, so I'd probably say that's, yeah, Proton. Show my ignorance in rally cars here. If you're gonna to come to this car show now, you can see that actually, they seem to have done quite a lot of work and it's no longer that ridiculous drop where all the lowered cars kept scraping out every time we saw it. So it looks like they're taking it really seriously because let's face it, they didn't really need to do it for the rally cars. But it was pretty horrendous the amount of times i mean we've even seen land rovers like close to bottoming out you basically had to take a run at it and if you got out you got out it's the kind of thing that dorothy would just sit there and get stuck 
So Annabelle's just made her way down from the showground up there. Yeah, get some pictures, good idea. Turn lamps on it as well. Round lines. C2. You'd like to know that Dorothy's now in for full diagnosis, so we'll see exactly what's going on with it. I'm also going to get them to check when they think any filters and the fluid changes were so we can determine whether the actual job that we asked to be done had been carried out. Because the plot thickens with Dorothy. It's not great, I really. Ooh, MX-5 and a Clio behind it. Oh, it's towing a Clio. <laughs> oh. Oh, here we are. They're coming thick and fast now. So, yeah, pretty random, that. A Mini, another MX-5. Yeah. Rover as well. I wonder if it's a ZR. Looks like one with a mesh grill, but who knows. That's nice courteous message there. Thanks for marshalling. Yeah. Couldn't get that one wrong, could I? It's like bumpers taking a bit of pounding on this side. Oh yeah, thank you to Mr. James Coleman for getting me a picture of an FSO Polonaise. You probably know the history that my granddad had one of those and he used to drive it all the time when I was about 17 years old. And one day I was going under the crag and the clutch went, we had to push it around the corner. The thing about the FSO was it was such an interesting car. It was a 1.5 and it had the gear stick on the dashboard as well. <laughs> a bit like the Civic EP3 when you think about it. And uh, if anyone's got an FSO Polonaise Sprint for sale, ideally with a number plate F82 AEC, I'd have it. You're damn right. What's this? A 205. Looks like there's another 205 GTI coming in. Ironically, everybody's leaving the tea room now. Look at that. Look at that suspension. Look at that bounce. Proper pug. So that's two. 205s. Oh look, the aerial nomad's going up on the stand. It's not every day you see a 205 and an aerial nomad in the same shot. Look at the mud flaps as well. It shows you that these cars are taken seriously, the routes that they take and the speeds that they drive. So we've got a few things coming up this week, but we'll unveil more moving forward. 
going to be meeting up with a few people as well. So a quick look at the um, Sunbeam. So this is a Talbot Sunbeam Sprint. Okay. Can't not get the Nomad leaving, can we? And he's off on Mish. Holding it down until he gets to the 60. Or holding it down full stop. A lot of protons in this. I'm sure there must have been some collaboration between that and Mitsubishi at the time. No doubt Joseph knows about that. Satria. So that's the second Satria we've seen. Something coming. Ah, oh, Mark to Escort. Yeah, man. Looks like a Mexico, because it's in orange, but who knows. Sibi Oscars on front as well. Revelite wheels. Oh, min. RS2000, my mistake. But in my defense, it's pretty hard to tell the difference between a Mexico and a 2000. So 2.1 Pintos in those, but the likelihood is it's not gonna be standard. Oh my word, the third 205 of the day. And that looks quite a bit higher than the others, to be honest. Equally as stiff suspension. So the third 1.9 GTI. I think one of these years I might actually have to take part in something like this. Maybe the Mark II would be um, the perfect candidate. I'd have to look into actually see what you need to do. Do you need alley fuel tanks, roll cages? I don't actually know. Answers on a postcard. And look, Citroen Saxo with, yeah, another proton behind it. <laughs> the Satria again. So it started off with AXs when I was young and then it moved to the Saxo. And I'm sure Mr. Lloyd had one of these as well. Black box monitored. I doubt it nowadays. And another proton. Riveted arches as well. So the 16 valve satria with a dark side skull and crossbones. So they're Lotus engineered. Well, that's two of them have said that on the back. That's I didn't know that. I know Lotus have engineered quite a few cars Talbots, um, Citroens. Try to think what else. I didn't know they worked with Proton. T3 camper. MX-5. Ah, MG has just climbed on. Ah, Peugeot 106 as well. All of a sudden, it's got lively. Interesting modifications on the Pug as well. Drilled out some forced air induction on the front bumper. Full roll cage as well, as you can see through that window. You don't see many 106 rallies around nowadays. Another Proton, another Satria. So GTI 16 valve, I reckon. Looks like that's got riveted arches as well, which makes me wonder if that was actually an option then.
Lotus engineered badge on the opposite side this time. Interesting. <laughs> Starting to fill up here now. I had been weighing up going to the Festival of the Unexceptional yesterday, but I decided against it with the Civic because I don't think it's good for the journey. I think it would have been a bit sketchy. It's a long way to take a car with a, a noisy wheel bearing and also it sounds a bit like a Boeing exhaust as well. Some really interesting vehicles. A bit gutted, really. Bye-bye, MG. And look, a Metro behind it. And a Citroën. No, 106. Mind you, Citroen Saxo and 106 are on the same platform. Essentially the same car. Look at that. Rover Metro. So the 106 GTI and I don't know what the Rover Metro is. It could be a GTA. I don't actually know. Seems to have standard wheels though. Very cool. It's amazing what people take on these events. The people at the BMC Learning Show will be like, what the? Exactly. MX5 arriving now. Randomly going into the other car park. Sprite heading off. Oh, Vauxhall Corsa. One point two Corsa. Hmm. Somehow doubt that. The exhaust says differently. Listen to that. Straight cut box. Oh, the MG's just driven past. <laughs> Cars coming down. This looks like an early Mini. Whoa, look at that stiff suspension. So the MX-5 is now coming in from an obscure route. This would be a good shot. All right, one Fiesta, MX-5 and a Mini. KLMC sticker in the back as well, which is Kirby Lonsdale Motor Club. So a Mini Cooper S. Part of the Clitheroe guys teams. Oh, the Uno's about to climb. I never thought I'd see a 60S at one of these. Two or five rally, maybe. Yeah, something like that. I don't see many of those at all. Yeah, two or five rally. And now MX5. Three GTI 19s and a rally. Get in. <gasps> a rally. Awesome. You just don't see those at all anymore. Should be in a museum. That's no, good to see it being driven. Look at the door handles on them. Ooh, Micra. So Micra K11 as well with some ridiculous suspension by the way it was bouncing then. Point three Super S, hmm, and the rest. Look at that. So, to the naked eye and not the car enthusiast, you could basically see either two Subarus or two Protons. There's hardly any difference.
It's only when they're parked next to each other you can actually see it. Obviously the Subaru's a four doors, but it's not a million miles away from the styling, is there? It's amazing how many people favor protons for this kind of event as well. Ooh, an Alpha 145. <laughs> Who'd have thunk it? <gasps> so my brother's actually got one of these. Oh my word. There's no way I would have expected to see that car in a million years on this kind of event, ever. Looks like a clover leaf as well by the wheels. Didn't really see the interior, but oh my word. So it's an early one as well by the look of it. Another little Suzuki. So yeah, so sport by the looks of it. Assuming it's a sport. Speaking of that, we've got brand new sport, the hybrid, on test in a couple of months. So that'll be the booster jet engine, but it's also got the hybrid edition as well. So it should be even more fun. Because last time we drove the booster jet, oh, what a car. Drove that over the switchbacks and it handled like it was on rails. Very courteous drivers when they're leaving the villages as well, which is good to see. And I am surprised at how many MX-5s there are. <laughs> yeah, that's what I assume. I don't actually know much about this event, but I would assume they're now off to the next point, yeah. yeah. I do like that Ignis. <gasps> so a C2 GT, I don't think I've ever seen one of those. Many years ago, Mum and I were in the Isle of Man and we saw the Manx Rally and there was a, a Saxo that kind of nearly ran us over because it went the wrong way. <laughs> we were going pretty flat out for it. Was it Castletown? I'm not sure. It was along the side of the road because we had a Saxo oh, come at us, didn't we? I can visualise it. Yeah. I'm not sure. That was many years ago because the Manx Rally used to run right past the farm where my granddad was born as well. Wham Fillmore. That was always fun. They were pretty quick over there. Mind you, like most motorsports in the Isle of Man, tend to drive rather rapidly. There's the MX-5 with various lawns and other bits. That's proper styling that, isn't it? A wheel just basically tagged onto the boot. Nice. Clears are coming, so that means it's now running. Makes you wonder what was wrong with it. Two one seven two, sir. So 206 GTI 180. Don't see many of those. Brother's housemate had one of those. Up in Newcastle. He had the obligatory Nurberg sticker next to it as well. So two Cleos and a Saxo. 
pretzel wagon over there as well. It's interesting watching the cars leave this event. Everybody from Ray basically redlines it out, whereas all these professional drivers don't. They all leave very carefully and very courteously. I do like a 172. Be a bit warm in there. I'm wondering where the final cars are. I'll go and check in and just see if I can find out. How many is left? How many are left to come in? How many are left to come in, approximately? Uh, Six or seven to get okay. to so they're still a bad chunk. No, Some no, interesting most, cars, most, isn't there? Most of it's, most of it's gone. Right. I was interested to see an Alpha 145. I haven't seen many of those <laughs> racing, do you? There's like another one coming in. Nice. Thank you. Just chatting to the marshals then, there's six or seven cars left to come in, but the majority is now here. So I was like, one more? No. Ah. On the Civic EP3 here. Bit random. And type R EP3 as well. A bit like the premium that we had. Yeah. yeah, fine. Some rare motors coming through, isn't there? Like 145s and that. Rare cars, like the Alpha 145. I didn't expect to see that. <laughs> There's about six or seven cars left to come, isn't there? Yes, oh, lovely Morgan. Morgan? Proton. Yeah. Yep. You're actually, this is actually live now going straight to the YouTube channel. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's, it's good that I get to chat to people. Do you come to those then as well? Oh, you run it all? Ah, yeah, yeah. oh, right. So you work with the Cochrane guys as well? Yeah, that's Mick, yeah. Oh, there's Mick, yeah. I hadn't noticed him. Yeah. How you doing? We, we, we try and work together now. So it makes it a bit like more easy. Yeah. Well, that's it. You hold a lot of events between you, <laughs> both of you. So there you go. Yes, it just it makes life easier. We can help with the door. Yeah. Well, I say I live in Silverdale. Oh yes. Yeah, it was. Um, I came down with the uh, the blue one C one two four Mercedes, the pillarless coupe. So we've got that in the Mark II Golf GTI and that little Civic that we arrived in. And uh, my brother's got a 145 as well, so I was a bit surprised to see one roll in. Mark II Escort. It's all right, it's live streaming anyway. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, I want to attend that. Right. 
good. Because last time, we'll attend that. They were on sort of refurbishment. Yeah. And uh, they never opened barriers, but then uh, we're, we're, back on, we're back on track with that. Good. Well, it's nice to be, because when I was at Cockrum last time, the mud life turned up, you know, Damien Turner. Did you see him with Neva? Brand new Neva. He had a brand new Larder Neva there. All right, no, okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but that, have you ever seen the 2021 plate that had just been imported straight from Russia? Because there's a guy that's now started selling them in this country and they're going down a storm because people love the simplicity of a Larder Neva and its capabilities. So I jumped on Damien's and did a quick review in your, in your the car show. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Now I've got some uh, a Heritage S2000 coming in a couple of weeks that I'm going to do something with so hopefully an event falls on that so there you go that's the guys that run the Cockrum show and the Ray event as well right I think we'll call it a day